Y'all having a good time so far? Kamea Con 2021. get started or we yeah, want to wait a few minutes yeah, yeah, yeah let's just get yeah. started so we we will tell you right now um that we polled the entire attendance of this convention and um only allowed you all to come in because no one else rated on the cool meter as much as you all did so that's right, yeah. that's right. you can take that home that's something you are the you are the coolest of the cool so, but uh why don't we introduce ourselves and then uh kind of uh kick it off and see what's going on. So why don't we start with you, Lord Frieza? All right, well, I'm Linda Young, OG Frieza, and I also do Baba and Fasha, and I did a rally, all on Dragon Ball Z, and Pisa, actually, too, the, what was she, secretary of Chris Rager's character? Don't ask me. Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan! <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is uh, John Swayze, and I play Dadoria, and um, uh, a host of other small bit characters in, in Dragon Ball, but my main character is uh, Dadoria from Kai, and um, then I play a whole bunch of other characters in other shows. So. And that leaves me. I'm R. Bruce Elliott. I play Captain Ginyu in Dragon Ball Z Kai, Dragon Ball Z Super, and about 800,000 Dragon Ball Z video games, I believe, <laughs> something like that. So if you know my voice as Captain Ginyu, chances are by sheer weight of numbers, you've probably heard me in, in video games more than you've heard me in the series. <laughs> right? Is that about right? Do we have some DBZ video game players here? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. kind of turned into a yeah, well, he did turn into a frog, but you know, he, he did his best. What can you say? <laughs> but I love. Uh, I'm gonna show off my T-shirt. This is my T-shirt. Thank you, thank you. Me and my boys. You too can own a T-shirt like this. Okay, in the in the exhibit hall. Yeah, go see the I got, I got a few left. So, okay, and they're brand new at this con. Never been never been shown. You could be truly an elite. <laughs> so, come get a t-shirt. So, and I have done, I've been doing this uh, 18 years, just about coming up on 18 years for Funimation. So you might know me also as White Beard in One Piece. Um, in, the, in what's going on currently in One Piece, I'm King Gancho of the Tantata tribe. Is that right? Something like that. Um, I've actually done like five or six different characters in, in One Piece. Whitebeard was, was the big one. Um, I'm Richard Moore in Case Closed, which was my very first show at, at Funimation way back when. Um, I'm Kambe in Samurai 7. I'm Dot Pixis in Attack on Titan. Uh, I am um, Master Makarov in Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale fan? And I'm poorly Yusika. Love Makarov. I miss Fairy Tale. I miss Fairy Tale. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, fun show. Anyway, and about, oh, I don't know, 230, 240 other characters. 
If you want, I'll dig out my list and we'll just sit here and I'll read them all to you. <laughs> I, that, that would take up the rest of the hour. I'd like to see that impressive resume, sir. Yeah, that would be a, a, not a very good panel. So, anyway, so I've been around for a while. Well, you want to see if they have any questions? Yeah. yeah any questions? Come on. So we're looking for questions from you guys. What do you want to know? Did you ever have a or uh, Garfield David? Every form but the gold. Do you have an idea of what your version of the golden form would sound like? I never really thought of that. I don't know. Probably similar, but maybe more, even more evil and more powerful. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I could laugh longer, talk bigger, call more people monkeys. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Was there any like vocal editing or any kind of software editing when doing freeze a third form, or did you do freeze a freeze a third form naturally? No, I think they lowered my voice a little and put an echo in it. I'm pretty sure. We tried to do freeze a third form. Like oh gosh, I could never get it that low. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else have another question? They will, they will do some engineering tricks yes, sometimes yes. And, and play little electronic games with our voices. Yes. I know I've done a couple of roles where they, I've been told, where I've listened to it, and I go, was that me? I know. And they'll go, well, we actually, we, we pitched you a couple yeah. of steps down. And oh, okay. And put some echoes and all sorts of cool stuff. Yes, back there, right? All right, this is for Linda Young. Yes. Um, if they called you today saying, if you wanted to redub uh, Dr. Slump, well, dub it for the first time, would you do it, considering it was five years the original series? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah! There's really, there's really never, it. There's really never a, a, a deal where we'd go, no, I'm not interested, thank you. <laughs> I'd rather just sit at home and wish I had work. <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, so we definitely do it. Now, I would say, you know, I mean, Bruce and talking about doing that. I've been doing this about 25 years and you know there's some voices I just can't recreate that I did 25 years ago you know that my voice just isn't there anymore so um but anytime they recall us I mean absolutely oh, we yeah. all we jump on the chance yeah it's always fun too because when you're I, I know you all heard this too they're like you know they go hey is there going to be a season blah 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 of course with Dragon Ball and One Piece and things like that it's like yeah, they're never going to stop making that, you know. But there's some shows you're like, are they going to do that again? And you're like, I, I hope so. I wish they would, you know. But, of course, yeah. it's not up to us. Like, they, you kind of hear rumors that maybe they do Yu Yu Hakusho again. But I don't know. That would be really cool. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Wouldn't it? We never know. The, man, the, the actors are the last to hear. That's I true. Swear. It's very frustrating sometimes. It I say, true. It's a great show. Is there going to be another season? I have no idea. <laughs> really, the, the <laughs> best thing, our best, our best um, uh, knowledge of is there going to be another season or whatever is actually talking to you all if you all are reading the manga. That's so like true. in uh, My Hero Academia, I play all for one, and I have people going, <laughs> they'll come up and I, if any All For One fans, I'm not trying to steer it away from this, but, so, I've been in prison, my character All For One's been in prison. Oh, I'm and, glad uh, you chose it was your character. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, I gotta get back, I'm overdue <laughs> work release. That's why he's got an orange shirt. Yeah, you gotta see my bracelet down here, it's really nice. <laughs> but, um, it's funny because people walk up to me and they go, man, just wait. <laughs> I'm like, and it's just what's about to happen. Well, it, it comes out of the manga way before the anime, you know, so it's all very, very exciting. So we, we get our information, like, is there going to be another season and stuff from what you all know, so. That's true. You guys know more than us. <laughs> so when, when you guys are doing the, the voice recording in the studio and they're, you know, doing it scene by scene either and the episode airs, are there any scenes that you guys have watched? and you go back and think that you could, should have done it differently or it didn't turn out the way you thought it would? 
Well, I don't watch them that much, to tell you the truth. I mean, but I'm sure there are. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can tell you when I've seen stuff, especially stuff I've directed, but when I see stuff, when it all comes together, it's just like, why did I do it like that? <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully when, you know, when, because of the, the process of doing ADR, which is what we're doing, um, the director is going to give you the context of the scene and the lines and all that so you know the proper delivery, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to, I mean, example, like, he just left. He just left? He just left? I mean, there's all kinds of ways to say it. And um, if you don't know the context, you're not going to say it, perhaps, the proper way. So we rely on the directors, obviously, to guide us to, you know. And then we hear the Japanese version first, right. too, which kind of helps, um, even though we don't speak Japanese, I don't think. Do you? Hi. <laughs> Do you? Nani? That's all I know. But it does help, because you can kind of hear inflections. And, and um, if they're angry or happy or whatever. I will say for me, sometimes, on a, on a rare occasion, I'll be watching something that I was in, and, I, and I'll go, oh, that's the take they decided to use. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because oh. I, I, I remember doing it this way, which I thought was a little bit better, but you know, but generally I'll look at that and I'll, and I will understand why the director, oh, okay, that makes sense that he decided to go with that, with that reading instead of the one that I like, because he knows the show better than I do, the director. I say he is often a female too, but they, the director will know the show better than, than the actor will. So it does, it happens sometimes, but for the most part, directors are pretty good at, yeah. at getting the, getting the yeah. performances that they want. And there's sometimes, you know, and I, I can say this, is, I know you've, I don't know if you've directed Linda or not, but um, as a director too, you know, um, there's a, there's a, an interesting line of, you know, you're directing an actor, and myself as an actor, I can't, you know, they deliver a line, and it works fine, but not as the director, but as the actor, I'm going, God, that's just not the way I would have done it. <laughs> and, and, and you, but yeah. you can't do yeah. that, because oh, yeah. you can't give them a line read on every line. That's not, A, it's not efficient, and it's certainly not appropriate. So you have to just, you're also relying on the talent and skill of the actor to, that they bring to the table, and they bring something that I don't, even as an actor, you know, they bring something totally different, and, and you have to trust that that's it. Now, if they're way off point, you know, you can guide them in as a director, but not as the act, you know what I mean, not actor to actor, yeah. it's director to actor, so um, there's been lines that I'm like, you know, even uh, as an actor being directed, I would go, oh God, I didn't really like that, but the director's like, no, that was great, that's exactly what I wanted. And you're like, oh, well, fine. If you're happy, I'm happy. Because really, I mean, it's just like any art form. It's so yeah. you could do, I could do it a thousand different ways, you know? Yeah. And so. I never thought of that though. You would think like an actor and think they should say it that way, but that makes sense. Right, right. All right, yeah. we do have another question right here. Oh, question. Okay, so my question's for all three of you. Um, John Swayze just brought it up a second ago about like, you know, all for one and not knowing like what happens later and stuff like that. Have y'all ever gotten a role, right? You know, you kind of, you're not familiar with the series at all yet. And so you do some research, I guess, and then you get familiar with the series. Do you guys ever be like, hey, this series sounds pretty good. And you like read like manga onwards, not only because you like the series, but also like, I guess to avoid spoilers. Or do you like being surprised in the series that you're voicing? Like, oh, that's what's happening. Um, I, I, uh, like to just, I like to go in kind of cold. I mean, if I'm auditioning for something, um, I'll do my homework and my research and my, you know, as an actor, um, an example of that, there's a movie I did called The Boy and the Beast by Momuro Hosada. And um, I was auditioning for The Beast. And so I went and watched a little bit of the Japanese Podcast version. Again. What's that? I passed again. Yeah, well, certainly wasn't gonna be the boy. So, um, <laughs> Uh, but I listened to it, I read it, I studied up on Hosada a little bit. Um, I had done Summer Wars that he also did. Um, so I was kind of familiar with his work. And so I, I really prepared myself. And then once you go in 
start doing the role, um, you know, it, I, I don't think, okay, I'm gonna do this, this episode, so I better read up on the manga. I just, we just go in and do it. And once you've gotten into the character, I mean, my gosh, you know, if they said, Linda, we want you to do Frieza again or whatever, I mean, she can jump right in, you know, she's done so much of it. And Bruce has done so much of his characters that we can just jump in and just go with it. And it's also nice to be surprised, I think, when you find, you know, like what's gonna happen. I like it to be cold too, but except, except for auditions. Right. Read up on that. But I'm the same way, I like the surprises. I think it probably makes me do better, like fresher. If I know exactly what's going on, I might overthink it and then not be natural or not do what I was going to do. So I agree with you. I like it cold. And, and let me just, and I'd like to hear what Bruce says too, but I will add to Linda, you brought up something about listening to the Japanese. And to me, um, Way back when, when I started doing this, we would always change some lines and make them funny and Americanize it or, you know, whatever. And um, I was actually working on a show at Funimation and I kind of realized, it was about 20 years ago, I realized, you know, you can't, you can't do that because the Japanese are the one who created this. We're not, we didn't create anything. We're dubbing this into English. So it's important to me and I'm sure to everyone, that we stay true to as close as we can to what the Japanese performance did or is. And we have to recreate that in an English language. So reading the manga ahead of time and knowing, you know, getting preconceived ideas of how you're going to do your performance really isn't a, it doesn't matter because you can think up all the lines you want and all the ways you're gonna do them and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, when you get in the booth, you're going to have to do it the way it needs to be done. And that's the way it was done originally and the way the director wants to direct it. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's kind of fruitless to sit there and develop this whole thing. Now, if it was prelay, if it was all original, that would be different. Uh, all right, got a question right here. Did voice acting find you or was that a plan? Mine was a plan because I was always an actress in theater, and I did other voiceover work, but I stumbled into anime, I did, because um, my friend said there was an open audition and asked me to come along with her, and I almost didn't go, but, um, but I had already done so much work. So, anime didn't really seem that different uh, as other things, except that the only thing is being in the booth all by yourself and then having to just imagine the other person talking to you. That's a little different. But otherwise, it's almost like theater acting, right? Yeah, yeah. in a lot of ways, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, um, I was an actor, but I still am, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, but I, I started acting in 87 and was doing film and television and commercials and voiceover and commercial voiceover industrial area i mean the whole thing and um uh somebody one day said you ought to do this thing called anime and i'm like what's anime and he's like well it's japanese animation i'm like well i don't speak japanese so that ain't gonna work he's like no dude we dub it into english and i was like oh well all right i'll give it a go so there's this company in houston called adv films back in the uh, early 90s and um, I went to an audition and actually tanked my audition. It was one of the worst auditions I'd ever had. I didn't understand the process. I didn't understand what I was doing. And so I left and I sat in my car for about 15 minutes and I said, okay. And I went back in and I said, I know you got a lot of people to go through, but I would like another shot at this if you don't mind. And they said, sure. So I waited till the end of the day and I went back in and when they said, we're rolling, I just started going, you know, all this stuff, they're like, oh, that was great. So they hired me. So um, I certainly just stumbled into it. And even when I started doing it, I still didn't know what it was. I was like, what, what is this? This is just characters with kooky looking hair and funny eyes. And why are their eyes so giant? I don't understand. And, oh, I get it. This is Speed Racer. That's what it is. And so I was like, you know, and for me as an actor, 
was just another gig, you know, it was another thing I was doing. It was, you know, it, it, it paid this bill a month kind of thing, you know. And um, I had no, and then conventions started happening and I was like, you know, whatever, I'm not going to a convention. I don't wanna do that. I wanna give away my weekend, you know. And, and to think now, back then, 25 years ago, to what it is today, I would have never have dreamed what it's. I don't think any of us would have. And I, and I will tell you this very proudly: that ADV, which is now Sentai Filmworks down in Houston, where I work as a director and actor, and Funimation, um, which is sort of now the MGM of anime. Uh, between those two, and then you've got Okratron and a bunch of satellite studios in Houston and, Te and Dallas and, and Rooster Teeth in Austin, but Texas. And I have no data, hard data to prove this, but Texas, in my estimation, is the number one producer and distributor of anime in North America. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly yeah, the world, think, except think for Japan. Right. I think right. So it's something to be very proud of, man. Texas, Texas supports its anime. And uh, I mean, we've got KameaCon right now. There's Anime Matsuri going on in Houston. I mean, there's con there are conventions every single weekend somewhere you know and it's just amazing it's how much this this industry has not just thrived but just flourished and exploded and that's all because of you guys so thank you yeah. and and yeah, by the way this 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 fellow who used to not know what cons were and didn't, didn't want to give up his weekends now has his own con yeah anime dallas yeah oh, anybody been to anime dallas well, there's one. All okay. right. Well, the anime it'll be, Dallas thank you. It'll be in November this year. Anime yeah. Dallas. Yeah. The DFW out. Hyatt Regency. Pretty so cool. Pretty come cool. out. All right. We do have another question. I have an here. answer to that question. Which was, <laughs> are you sure? We're going to get to me. Um, I, sort, I sort of did fall into it. I was also an actor for a long time like Linda. Started, started as a stage actor, you know, high school, college, community theater. Uh, became a professional actor, joined Act Actors Equity Association, started working in, in equity houses, which meant I had to work under contract, they had to pay me, you know, I couldn't do, I couldn't work for free anymore. So that was kind of my background. And I had an agent in Dallas, and my agent one day called up and said, how'd you like to go to this place called Funimation and do an audition? And I'd heard of it, I'd heard of Dragon Ball Z, and that was about it. I went, sure, I'll go out there. And I auditioned for Case Closed, and I got it, and I'm still doing it. Here I am, about 250 characters and 250 shows later. I'm still doing it. Yay, I love it. <laughs> but I'm sort of an accidental Question voice actor here. in that oh, sense. We'll get you, we got one back here, then we'll get you. Yes. All right. This one's a uh, twofer. The first one is for Linda. How surprised were you to find out how high pitched the voice of Frieza would be when you got the uh, when you got the audition? Were you surprised that it was such a high pitched role, or were you expecting a more modern modern day voice role? Oh, you mean it was so crackly in my voice and so all that? Oh, um, I was surprised I got that part. Yeah, because I had auditioned for. Um, a lot of other parts on there. They had me um, listen to a tape of the Ocean Dub, the Canadian actors, and you had to try to imitate them. That was how we did it. We had to imitate other voices. And I thought I imitated a lot of the other ones better, but so when they called and said you got Frieza, I wasn't even sure what Frieza was. So yeah, it was kind of, but I didn't mind. I mean, um, I think I'm one of the only people that could do that crackly voice of Frieza without coughing or something. <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah. So I was I was okay with it. The one thing I had to learn were, um, were all the fighting noises. All that kind of thing, because I know guys do that all the time, right? And when you're growing up and stuff, but I had it. So yeah, actually- That's what grown men do, is we walk around <laughs> just going, <laughs> Yeah, it's how we communicate. I know, yeah, yeah. I know. But, um, so, that was the only thing, but Christopher Sabat taught me how to do all the fighting noises, and then he said, you can do it like any man. So I was and like, thank you. you 
Okay, the second half of the question is, how long does it take all three of you to get out of character? Like, do y'all go to the grocery store right To get out of character? Yeah. Oh. Say, <laughs> say like, Linda goes to the grocery store and goes up to the checker and be all like, is that cash or credit? That's credit. <laughs> oh, no, no, no way. <laughs> it doesn't take long to get out of the character. <laughs> A few, a few seconds as a rule. I don't know, if, yeah. I've, if I've been doing a character all day long, maybe I'll go home and find myself, I'll open my mouth and that character will pop out, but not very often, really, not very often. Or sometimes like in theater, yeah, like you've been theater, doing this yeah. character forever, that kind of comes out, right? Yeah. But my husband will say that I start calling him a stupid monkey and stuff, but I did, <laughs> he's lying. I, I was gonna say, so it, don't, it usually comes out when I'm scolding my children, you know, it's like, I told you to do that now, you know. What is that? What are you talking about, Dad? That's stupid. That's what my son, you know, my son's John Bergmeier, and um, he did Tien, but um, he'll tell people the same thing that I would yell at him and his sister like that, but I did not. <laughs> But now I will when they're grown up, especially for him saying that. Huh. Um, my, my question was persuasion. Are you familiar with some of the other Houston actors? Well, I know he's not in Houston anymore, but uh, like Christopher Ayers, or are you also familiar with like Lucy Christian and sure. Ayers and yeah. all yeah. that? Good yeah. friends well, what is your yeah. experience with them and what's it like working with those people? Oh, well, it's, it's always a joy. Um, most of the time, we don't really work with other actors because uh, we're in the booth separately. But Chris, um, uh, before he got sick, was uh, directing, so I worked a lot with him as uh, a director. <laughs> I have this funny little meme, it's kind of my own meme about Chris, but he's such a, such a giving and caring and loving individual, and he's just always concerned, and every time I'd walk in to a session, it'd be like, he'd be like, John, come on, come walk with me. Let me tell you about this show. And he's telling me all about it, all about it, all about it. We're down there for like 15 minutes. You know, it's an, it's an hour session. And we've already burned 15 minutes. He's just telling me all about it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that sounds great. He goes, and then I was reviewing it. And I saw this character. And I thought to myself, there's only one person that can do that. John Swayze. That is John Swayze right there. And I go, great. Well, what is his name? Soldier B. <laughs> That's not really Truth, it just is always, it's always kind of funny to me. He built up this big thing that's like, you know, this tiny little character. Uh, when working with voices, is it better to sit down and try to broaden your range and learn new types of voices, or should you try to polish what you got? What was the last part, or should you what? Should you try to polish the range like that you already have? Try to make the voices that you can already do just better? Oh. I would say, um, number one, when it comes to voice acting, is number one, be an actor, okay? And we've all said that before, you've probably heard that before, but be an actor. So when you're doing voiceover in general, the main thing is use your own voice. You know, we get people that come up to us a lot and go, hey, I can do a great Frieza, or I can do a great Ball for One, or I can do a great Lord Death, or I can do a great, you know, whatever the character might be for whatever actor. And it's, a, it's flattering that they do that. But at the end of the day, it's like me going up to Dan Castellaneta and going, hey, listen, I can do a great Homer Simpson. He's like, so? <laughs> I do Homer Simpson, you know? I mean, it's like, so you want to develop your own voice and your own voice is your voice. And that's, as a voice actor, you must remember that is actually the number, in my opinion, the number one thing that makes you the most unique yeah. among anyone is nobody, nobody has a voice exactly like yours. So that's your strength. So you wanna build on that, okay? Um, you know, very rarely do we get called in to do something where we're having to really scratch our voice like Frieza or the, his minions or uh, Lord Death or something like that. It's usually something that's more natural. And so um, you wanna, you, you know, you, you kind of feel out and figure out what's in your wheelhouse, if you will. What's in your range, you know? I cannot do, never could, and never will be able to do what um, other actors can do, like they play young, the young kids, 
You know, I just can't, I don't have it. This is not me. Conversely, they can't do what I do. But there are lots of actors that can do, you know, various things. But anyway, the main thing is just stick with your own voice. So um, I would say hone what you've got and make that, make yourself stand out that way. Not that I can, you're the man of a thousand voices because we just don't need that. And um, if you're a singer, I've noticed that, you know, depending on your range in singing, you can place your voice in different places. Like you can place it in alto or place it in soprano, place it in tenor. And that's, that's how I get, um, I think, different pitches on voices. All right, we got one more question right here. Hello. You all seem like nice individuals. So did you ever have trouble acting evil? Like, I know I would have so much trouble being like a mean person. So did you guys ever have some moral dilemma whenever you had to be evil? No, that's the fun part. <laughs> that's the most fun. It's always best to play evil. It's fun to play evil characters. And a lot of really nice people play evil characters. Indeed. For instance, the three of us. I play a lot of, a lot of evil characters and a lot of dads. Often they're the same person. <laughs> I'm, not in, in I'm not in person an evil dad. I should point that out. Now, I'll have to say, when I first started doing Frieza, um, they told me I needed to be a little more mean and a little more evil. And um, I was going through a bad divorce then. Um, and Chris found out and he said, um, just pretend who you're beating up is your ex-husband. <laughs> use it, use it. And all of a sudden, all this evilness came out and all these loud voices and noises. So it was therapy also. <laughs> then Chris went, God, I see why I divorced you. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. good uh, it, it did work very well. And as it worked everywhere because I felt so good, like after I got all that out. It's therapy. It's therapy sometimes. Somebody else? Yes, hello. Hello. So I was wondering, what do you think it would sound like if Frieza was sending Ginyu and Dodori on a fast food run? Like, just go get my work. <laughs> Lay it on me. Okay. Captain Ginyu, Dodori, I need you to do me something. Do for me something, and I need it to be quick. Yes, Lord Frieza. I want some fast food. How fast do you want it, Lord Frieza? As fast as possible. I'm on my way. Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> That's your problem, Captain Gigi. I'm just going fast. You don't listen to all the directions. What about you, Dodoria? I've already ordered Uber Eats. You already ordered what? It's on the way. Uber Eats. Okay. Now that's smart thinking. Sorry, Lord Frieza. You're always sorry. <laughs> uh, Lord Frieza, I'm going to need your credit card. Oh, my credit card. Can I trust you? No. I didn't think so. Gun. <laughs> I'll give the credit card to Captain Ginyu. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> that is an original question. That right. absolutely is an original question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, how much time do you guys have left right now? We got 15. Uh, about 15 minutes. All right, a couple more questions then. Uh, what was your favorite scene to record? Hmm. Favorite what? Scene to record. Oh. oh uh, the oh. one we just did. That's actually coming up. <laughs> an upcoming episode of uh, Dragon Ball Z. You were recording, right? Yeah, there. that was It's fun. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Fast Food. That sounds like a good idea. Out of how many years among among the three of us, how many years all together are we? Oh, collectively? Our favorite scene, collectively? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Out of the last, what, 60 years? Let's just years? say that my favorite scene, the script was on a stone tablet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 
phone is actually on paper, <laughs> not on the computer. Yeah. And you had to look down and read it, and then you had to look up and look at the scene and look. Uh, uh, uh. And then they tell you that there are changes, and you're like writing it, oh, scratching yeah, it out, yeah, all that. Writing it. Yeah. I don't really have a favorite scene. I mean, although I have discovered that in many scenes, um, this is the downside of doing voice work versus live action. But in scenes where it's Frieza and his minions, Frieza's chatting away, mm -hmm. and Dodoria's just in the back, <laughs> just standing there, <laughs> not doing a thing. Your you know, presence. Yeah, but as a voice actor, that does me no good. <laughs> if I were live action, it'd be like, Swayze to the set, please. I'm like, yeah, I'll stand there all day long. Okay. <laughs> Getting paid. But for voice acting, it's like, <laughs> that, was, that was another thing, another meme with Chris. He go, you're gonna love this character. He doesn't say much, but he's in every scene. <laughs> well, that's great, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hi, Frieza. Oh, wow. Who's where? It's a little one. Well, hi. Hello, young one. Hello there. You just wanted to say hi? Well, hi, Matt. Well, hi, Matt. Oh, you did. Well, thank you. Maybe you can replace Dodoria. I'm now driving for Uber Eats. <laughs> All right, we've got another question right here. So I know with the voice acting, <clears throat> you have to put a lot into it and like to be able to project your voice and sometimes you gotta really get into it. Do you guys have any stories of when you're in the booth or anything like that where you went all out and you know maybe had a close call and you're like ooh I gotta sit down or you know maybe you were down but, for the count after doing a that close call screen. like you almost sharded your pants close call or <laughs> it, it could be from that end or what kind of like close call would you be inferring like, like, like falling out you know you got lightheaded and you had to take a seat for a, a good short while <laughs> no <laughs> No, I, oh, I, no, this I gotta tell you, regret this, asking didn't, that question. this didn't happen to me, but we were, we were having an open call down in Houston a couple years ago, and these actors all were coming in, and you know, we just give them stuff to read, and, and you know, and they go in the booth and they read. <laughs> this poor guy walks in the booth, and there's a group of us. I mean, there's like, we're in one thing, and there's only one director directing, but the other directors are sitting there in the room so they can hear what's, you know. They can get their own opinions about. And so I can't see the guy in the booth, even though there's glass. I'm, I'm on a couch over here. And uh, uh, Kyle is like, okay, man, so you all ready? And you, you know, you've got, you've got a room that's, you know, maybe this big, you know, it's, it's not a huge room, but it's, it's, it's the booth, right? And there's the microphone and the monitors and your headphones and everything. And um, we're like, uh, and I can see, I can see, all I can see is the cord of the mic for some reason, this kind of dangling. And, um, and I can see the microphone, but I can't see him. And we're like, okay, so uh, you all ready? He goes, yeah, just uh, give, me, give me one second, please. I'm like, okay. So the director turns to us and we're just kind of talking and stuff. And I just noticed the cord is droopy and then it just pops up like this and we hear this. We're like, what was that? And Kyle goes in, and the guy's kind of like, I'm sorry, I, I kind of blacked out there. Just, like, are you okay? Do you want some water? He's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll be all right. He goes, okay, well, let's, uh, let's get started. And he turns around again, and all of a sudden we hear, are you okay? Hello? Are you okay? So we go to open the door to the booth, man, and he's leaning against the door, passed out. I, he was so nervous, he was hyperventilating and, and all this kind of thing. Was like, so he oh. didn't even do any lines. He fainted before he did the lines. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It was very sad. I mean, it was like, you know, because you're kind of like, so you're, and, and you're, you know, I felt so bad for him, but it's like, you're not off to a very good start. Because <laughs> if this is going to happen every time you come in, right. it's going to be a problem. I um, never felt lightheaded or anything like that. Um, 
But one time I remember I did this whole big screaming session, like just really long time. And they said, oops, we didn't record it. <laughs> oh, man. It can be, it can be physically demanding. It kind of depends on how long you're doing it. Yeah, and, and, and how much how much of a strain on your voice it is. Directors are pretty good about taking care of our, our voices as, as actors, because they want to use this more than once, ideally. Um, but uh, yeah, but if you're if you're in the booth for you know five out of six hours in a in a day and maybe two or three days straight, by the end of the day it can be exhausting. And you're generally standing. And again, if, if it can be physically demanding depending on what the what the call is. If you're just speaking naturally, it's not that big a deal. But if you're doing a lot of fight reactions and a lot of. Uh, uh, and you generally want to be standing, so you so you're getting the energy of the body coming through the voice that way, and it can be quite demanding. And I will say one thing real quick: I did a I did a uh, Walking Dead video game, uh, in which my character uh, chokes and coughs and sputters for a long, long, long time before he dies. Okay. And we had and we wound up doing multiple takes of this of this character. And man, I thought I was going to throw up by the end of that session. It was it was probably the most physically demanding session I ever did, just because I was <laughs> You know, you do that for three or four hours, you know, you get something. Anyway, yeah. Right, do we have, uh, how much time do we have left right now? About five, ten minutes. All right, so I guess one or two more questions then. Yeah, we okay. Got five, five, six minutes. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, for Bruce, uh, sir, when they had you do Captain Ginyu again for Super, was yeah. there any surprise or elation for that? Because you're like, oh, it's not like the video games where I have to do the dynamic lines for another take on those for the end time. Oh, I mean, not really. You know, not really. It was, it was pretty, pretty similar as far as I was concerned. As far as you know, the dialogue and lines and the kind of action stuff. It was it was pretty much the same that uh, that I had been doing for Captain Guinea before, so I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Not very interesting answer, but that's the. <laughs> um, this question is for our Bruce Elliott. Um, when you got the part of Captain Guinea, were you asked the voice match Bryce Armstrong, or did you try to do your own thing? I have to try to remember that. I don't. I think I did. I think they did play me some of the original Bryce Armstrong. Uh, this has been years and years and years ago now. But I don't think they asked me to to try to imitate his voice. I, they weren't asking me to to match exactly what he had done, but just to kind of get the general feel, the general idea of it. And you know, my my joke has always been to people that when I when I auditioned for Captain Gideon, my audition was. And they cast me. Uh, I don't. I, that may be an apocryphal story. I don't actually remember very well anymore if that's actually a true story or not. But that's the story I've been telling, and I'm going to stick to it. Um, uh, yeah, I think the idea was just, was get was to get the flavor of it, to get the flavor of the original work that Bryce did. But but he, my guinea is my guinea. He's had his hand up for a long time. Way back oh. there. Well, did Joe finally did something right? Finally, one, one more at least, maybe, maybe two. One more for sure. Uh, one more. We got a couple. One, we got a, one more for sure. Okay. Uh, this is for all y'all. At any point in the y'all's recording, did y'all go off script and actually keep what you said in there, like the, your original lines? Like you go off script? Yeah, do you go off script and they're like, oh, that's pretty good. Let's stick with that. Oh. Um, um, not. Not really. Not really. Not Once really. in a while, if they're going to change a line, yeah. and you might have a way you'd naturally say it, you can suggest. But no, we, yeah. I mean, again, this goes back to uh, listening to the Japanese actor and staying kind of true to that. Or like Bruce was saying, they're not asking you to maybe voice match it, but ca capture the essence of that sound. And the thing is, if you created something, a movie, let's say, and it turns out to be a really cool movie. 
or even if it's not a cool movie, you made it. You poured your heart, your sweat, your blood, your money into it, and you made it. And then it goes over to Europe, and it's going to get dubbed into different languages, French, German, Italian, and so forth. You don't want them to go, oh, we're just going to change these lines. Now, you can have, it can be changed as long as it doesn't change the meaning, because different languages, you know, well, we don't have a phrase for get your ass out of here. You know, we don't have that. But they'll, so they'll make it, but you can't really go in there and just ad lib or change things up because that's not what the original thing did. And, and again, you have to respect the creator of that original project. You know, it's not fair to them to go, we're just gonna ad lib and change lines. Now, if you need to change a word, a lot of times we will have to change a word because of lip flap consideration. You know, that's a, that's a double flap and the word is one syllable, so we'll have to come up with a way to, let's tweak it. But as long as we're not changing the meaning of the, the, the sentence. So we don't really like go off and just ad lib stuff, you know, unless it's a, a spoof. Say, every, every once in a while, you know, we're, if, we're, if we're cutting up in the booth and we'll have done a take, you know, for and just for fun. And we'll yeah, just for, just fun, for fun, fun, fun. But it's it's not in the finished product. And they might they might use it in like in a, like a little blooper reel that comes on as a as an extra or, on the DVD. Or, or something we'll like we'll that. do stuff sometimes. Um, like I've done this before, where uh, you're recording and it's a long line, and you're you're like, all right, now listen, here's the plan. We're going to get over there. and We're going to take him down. And we're going to get all about our of him. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. But, and you realize, okay, I screwed up the line and I just made a funny, but they put it in there and it works perfectly. <laughs> so they'll sometimes leave that for the next actor to come in and just see if we can throw them, you know, just to mess with them. But that would never be the finished product. Well, the, one, the one time I actually did ad lib is Frieza had to talk in Frieza's native language. Ah. And they said, just do whatever you want. <laughs> so I don't, I, it was, came out pretty good. I don't even remember. It was something like, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it sounded real evil. How, how dare you say that? God, I thought we were friends. Really? Oh, oh, all right, all right, guys. Last question. This one is for Linda. Will you give us a death beam, please? Uh oh. How loud do I have to do this? <laughs> I don't even remember. Just say death beam, right? Yes, please. Okay. Maybe they should help me. Death beam! <laughs> all right. Coming out. Guys, thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for coming out to Command Con 2021. Uh, if you haven't already, or even if you have, get one for your friend. We'll be in the vendor's hall. Come by and get an autograph or a print or whatever. And thanks for having us. How about another big hand for Bruce Elliott? Another hand for Linda Young. My name is John Swayze. Thank you all for being here.